you're watching this, uh, you are curious about the Luffy XS multifunction scan gauge. Um, it has a ton of features, and I did a previous review on the XF. Um, there are differences, distinct differences between the two. As you can see, my XF is right there. Um, I did snag an XS for a second car, um, and of course, just to see the differences between the two of them. So, uh, for the most part, I just want to speak to the responsiveness of the gauge itself. Um, as you can see, the RPM cluster down there and up top, they are one and the same. They operate identically. And there are settings that can be um, enabled to speed any of the, if you're seeing a potential lag or anything between the ECU and the gauge, um, there are settings that can be adjusted in terms of milliseconds uh, for, for better reading. Um, if by chance your car happens to notice any type of lag, um, as you're using the unit. Um, <clears throat> I covered a lot in the XF and for the most part they're they're very similar. Um, a couple functions that the XS adds in comparison to the XF. I'll just get to this page right here to start. As you'll notice and I'll go through which what each of these mean individually. Uh, but as you'll notice there's 12 different parameters that are displayed at one time versus on the XF there are nine. Another big difference between the two this does not have the sequential lighting that is down at the bottom, all of those LEDs down there. The sequential lighting I use a lot, especially on the track or um, you know quarter mile, anything like that for shift points uh, to make sure because I am in a CBT vehicle, I don't over rev. Uh, there's no real rev limiter in this Legacy XT that I'm driving. Um, so if you miss a shift point, it'll push you into the next gear. You'll lose all your momentum not exactly exciting. Um, the optional shift light on the XF also helps make that shifting experience for you a lot better uh, in comparison. So um, again, I, I love both of these uh, and I love that this one gives you three more uh, parameters on one screen than the um, predecessor. Uh, the thing that I would sacrifice by using this as my primary uh, would be those shift lights. And uh, while there's different warnings that you can set up for your shift points on this. Um, I really do love the sequential lights of the XF in comparison to the XS. So if you're using this specifically because you want to be able to see your shift points and you would benefit from having some additional knowledge from the parameters that are listed, um, then this might be your option. If that's not as important to you and you want more information, um, you want G-forces, GPS speed, and things like that, then the newer model, which is a little bit sleeker in comparison as well, notice how thin it is, um, might definitely be a better option for you. So I'll take you through what each of these are and then of course what each one of them uh, has the ability to be customized into. I have speed in the top left as miles per hour, obviously customizable in kilometers if you need it. Air fuel ratio is next. Uh, that is PSI or vacuum pressure um, for my turbo. Long term trim, the tack for RPMs, short-term trim, throttle position, ignition timing, user one, which I'm gonna come back to in a second, intake air temperature at the filter or at the first bank sensor, intake air temperature uh, after the intercooler so that I can see the differences between the two temperatures and make sure the intercooler is cooling the way that it needs to, and then uh, airflow grams per second through the uh, through the first sensor. Um, what's cool about <laughs> what's cool about this, and you know, I think I mentioned it in the other one, having the insight into this because this vehicle is not uh, it's not able to be tuned. There's no Cobb access port or anything like that available for this specific car. But having the insight that I had allowed us to finish a custom intake. Uh, it allowed us to dial in the trims, uh, the airflow, um, kind of identify the fact that the math, math housing that we had on the custom intake was not conducive to the vehicle. Um, and without that information that was provided on the previous model, or obviously would have been provided on this, we wouldn't have known what we were chasing. So it was pretty cool to have this um, to kind of get an understanding of what was important. Uh, the other thing, and I'll show you that right now, is there are a couple other custom parameters that can be added onto the, v onto the display um, that are already set up from Luffy and their engineers that are sitting kind of behind the scenes. So there are a few custom PIDs that I want to show you guys. 
and to get to them you just go into the menu user data setup the first one and then you're going to select the file location go down to the PIDs and you'll see there's a list of different vehicle manufacturers here in Subaru this is automatic oil temp um, that is still a work in progress for the CVTs um, battery oil temperature and outdoor temperature I believe in a different uh, that might be Fahrenheit I'm not 100% sure which one that one is but the one that I do know because we had to use it was knock so I'm gonna select knock back out and you'll see now that changes from user one to knock um, you won't see this because I'm not gonna take this vehicle for a drive but when uh, knock was presented on the vehicle it would display very very easily right there where it needed to so um, it was a very very helpful parameter that we were you know to make sure that the car would run healthy uh, once we added in um, a couple of the things that we needed to change the dial in this intake uh, and I could not be happier so I you know shout out to the Luffy team their engineers for their partnership and uh, kind of pointing me through all of that stuff so we could figure out how to program it properly and see everything we needed to see uh, to get our desired end result so with that out of the way you've got several pages of information just like the XF very customizable the different parameters that you want to list across the vehicle or if you just want to leave them bone stock and then kind of customize where you see fit you see the flashing light just like I was talking about the sequential aspect of shift points on the XF the sequential lights were below it um, you can see the LEDs down there whereas the sequential lights are here and it basically just flashes to let you know you, you've exceeded the RPM limit that you've set and those are all set in the settings this one's definitely pretty cool um, if your vehicle doesn't have an ECU or doesn't have a parameter within it that lets you know what the g-forces are on your acceleration uh, this car does have it for G's in acceleration not necessarily in pitch and roll and things like that um, but on this particular one you'll notice oh, sorry You'll notice you'll get error or warning messages if by chance the vehicle is rolling one way or another there is an accelerometer built directly in here it'll specifically say I think I hit one for you sorry it'll specifically say if it's time to brake because you're or you you are braking because you're moving forward which is great for your track days um, or if you're accelerating pitch and roll depending on if you're off-roading. I think a lot of people that have uh, forerunners and other types of vehicles like that where this would integrate extremely well. You can see all of the stuff that you need to um, and you can program each one of these metrics that are displayed uh, to be whichever one you want them to be. Again, on all of the RPM limits, you can set anything that has a display of um, attack will allow you to customize where you want your shift points set up um, in your RPM range, which is pretty cool. Uh, your compass directionality can be um, programmed through the GPS settings that are in here. Um, and then of course, like I said, the G meter is, happens to be listed here in. Another good one. As you notice, not all of these, you notice this one didn't flash into a different color or anything like that. Um, not all of these flash at you to let you know that you're, um, to let you know that you've hit your shift point, um, but all of them still have the other information depending on what you're looking for. So again, different strengths, um, not necessarily one outweighing the other. They both kind of do the same thing, uh, but is a slightly different user experience across the two. And one more shift light there and that pr 
pretty much summarizes the Luffy XS. So uh, hopefully this is helpful to someone. Again, this vehicle uh, does not have tuning options available to it. So a lot of the stuff that we've been doing is kind of trial and error. Um, the <laughs> it has been very helpful having some form of insight to see uh, what the standard dashboard and gauges don't necessarily give us. Um, but I think it's it's kind of helpful to see some of the little things, but also keep an eye on the things that don't necessarily trip a check engine light on that topic. I'm sorry, one more thing that I should probably mention. Just like the XF, you do have the ability to do both time attack mode for your zero to 60s or quarter miles. Um, and then DTCs, you can actually see your codes should you happen to throw a check engine light. Um, you can see what those codes are. You can clear those codes therein as well. Um, I won't bore you with the menu because the menu is pretty self-explanatory. Um, there is one other uh, one other thing that was uh, the same in the XF and the XS. Um, if you're going to plug this into your car and leave it constantly plugged into your ECU, it does have an auto on, auto off. It also comes with an accessory wire, uh, so you can wire it into your ignition. It's not really necessary. Um, and I say that only to say, don't waste your time trying to figure out how to use it. The easiest way to circumvent getting a, an error or an issue of some sort when it comes to your vehicle turning on, uh, if you've got like an SOS light like the Subarus do, um, you would come into other setup and you see where it says power on delay. I just set that to seven seconds so that when the vehicle turns on or turns off, the uh, Luffy gauge turns on or off, but when it turns on, it turns on after a seven second delay um, so that the ECU doesn't recognize any additional voltage on the OBD2 port and throw a flag to say that there's something wrong with your, um, with your voltage. Um, but with that said, again, hopefully this is helpful and that's about it.